Hey, good morning everybody. Pat Zemer here with the MagnaWave Office Hours for this Tuesday morning. MagnaCon week. MagnaCon starts tomorrow. Uh, we're excited about that. A lot of last minute preparations taking place today. Moving into the hotel this uh -huh. afternoon later and then being ready to go uh, uh, after that tomorrow morning. Uh, we're looking forward to a big day uh, at MagnaCon here in Louisville. If you haven't made arrangements, come on down and visit us. If you're local and you're a doctor or veterinarian or just someone interested in uh, learning about PEMF and MagnaWave, uh, you can come out spend the day with us. Uh, go to some of our uh, sessions about uh, PEMF 101, Machines 101. Uh, visit with practitioners during the registration time uh, today. On tomorrow, that'll take place. It's an easy day for registration and those basically beginner type of classes and familiarization with PEMF. So if you're in local in the area, 25 bucks get you in all day long to enjoy everything that's going on and uh, learn a lot about PMF, experience the machines. And so again, if you're local to the area, come on down and see us. Also, tomorrow evening, we'll be having a private viewing of the movie uh, The Dog Doc with Dr. Marty Goldstein. Dr. Marty will be with us to answer questions and spend time with you before and after uh, the movie. It's free if uh, you'd like to come join us. Please uh, give us a call at the office to make sure that we have seating uh, still available but the uh, the viewing is free if you just want to come in the afternoon to uh, see the movie. If you have enough folks we may have a second showing. We're trying to work that out and discuss that now uh, with regard to that. But at any rate it's going to be a good time at Magna Con, come and learn a lot and we're looking forward to seeing a lot of uh, old friends who've been with us for a number of years and are coming to town to enjoy the uh, festivities and learning capabilities and learning activities taking place at MagnaCon. So we're fire, fired up and excited about that and looking forward to it. If you have a question this morning, you can certainly uh, give uh, send me a text at 502-599-9722 uh, and I will call <coughs> excuse me, I will call you back and we can discuss whatever it is you're wanting to talk about. If you'd also like, you could simply uh, put a question inside the chat box here on Facebook and I'll be able to see those uh, questions and get you the answers that you're looking for uh, for those particular questions. Let me get down here to where the uh, that should show up here on the oh that's the wrong page. Let me come over here. I've got them on. Let me come to this way. Yeah it gets confusing when we start doing all this stuff. Let's go home. Let's come back to the PMF corporate. Oh there it is. Where are oh I was up now I'm gone. All right gets confusing trying to decide which one of these computers I'm looking at uh, in the morning. But again, if you have any questions, just simply post them there in the chat box and I will get uh, right there it is. I'll get right to them. Uh, good morning, folks. Thanks you for being with me. Good morning. Uh, John Stevens, need I ask my question? Uh, John, uh, you don't need to ask your question. I know what the question, what the question is about the uh, um, CE certification. Uh, Mike is in Europe at this point. Actually, he's in Greece. And uh, what I'm planning on, try I tried to send him a text yesterday to have him give you a call to uh, give you the most direct answer there is. I, all I can say is everything is completed. Uh, we're just waiting for that final letter uh, from the CE people that uh, authorize that to happen. Uh, all the inspections are complete, the factory inspections and the whole nine yards, and uh, it's going to happen any day. I understand that some people have been, and it has. Frankly, we've been talking about CE for years on the new equipment, three, two or three years anyway, with, uh, but it was quite an arduous process for those of you who aren't aware uh, to obtain uh, CE, to be able to have an, a unit sold in Europe or other countries recognized the CE uh, medical CE designation and ha if it's from the United States it must first be safety cleared you have to put it through a UL type of uh, testing ours is done by Intertech uh, to make sure that the devices are safe and constructed in a safe manner and once you have that and then you have your you justify what it's going to be used for in those countries and then you have to have a factory inspection and, and the challenge with the factory inspection was that typically it was a less than a day long and then they changed it last year and they became two day uh, 
uh, two days of uh, inspection and uh, checking out the factories and that was completed and then they send you back you got to change this or you got to change that or give us this additional information and that took some time but that was all completed uh, actually it was completed and approved uh, I mean the factory no more questions about the factory and their building processes and so on and so forth uh, earlier this year and they say they sent the letter but no one names seems to know where it is so we're just caught up in a bureau bureaucratic nightmare trying to get these folks to resend the letter or uh, get it sent to begin with and I know that they're really inundated with stuff going on because there's not only our equipment but everybody's equipment had to go back everybody's factory who uh, is CE recognized had to redo their factory certifications and the list is a mile long as you can probably imagine so John that is the uh, answer to your question I am still going to try to uh, reach out to Michael and see if we can get him to uh, connect with you so you can talk with him directly about the CE project process. Uh, I know you've got some friends over there that have talked and, and uh, want to uh, get a question answered as well. If you have any questions folks, simply uh, give me a call. Uh, text your first name to 502-599-9722 and I'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions that you that you may have or you can post it right here in the uh, chat box on Facebook and I would be more than happy to uh, take a look at those uh, uh, questions and give you the answers that you're looking for. Okay, let's see here if I can find. Uh, let me come over here and go back to my Facebook uh, area. This is not Facebook. Yeah, I want to go to the um, groups. There were a couple of questions posted in the certified practitioners page uh, that perhaps I can. Um, a uh, person asks, what do you charge to work on multiple horses uh, at the racetrack? I think that would be the same as you would um, approach whether you're working on horses, small animals, or people. Uh, if someone has three or four dogs, for example, that you're going to treat, you'd probably put together a package uh, price for them. You know, the, the horses uh, at the racetrack, uh, there are average uh, fees that are charged around the country at various racetracks. Uh, uh, just for inf informational purposes if you want to discuss this so I'd be more than happy to do it but I would say an average uh, for a treatment on a horse in the performance world runs anywhere from 85 to 125 dollars uh, something like that for a treatment that can run anywhere from 20 to 30 to 45 minutes uh, when you go to the racetrack it's a little different I would say the rates on the racetrack uh, around the country run anywhere from 65 to 75 maybe 80 dollars same type of uh, basis as to what you're doing uh, quite often in the racetrack world you're doing many many more horses so you can have that situation many folks discount their treatments if they're doing multiple horses uh, some people do a package uh, do one horse for this amount three horses for this amount and and basically you, you can't give it away that that that's not what we're about but you can kind of base your your uh, fees on that but for your time is valuable and so when you look at the pre the price on the racetrack uh, six you can only do so many horses in a day so whether you make somebody a, a special price, do uh, three horses for the price of two, or whatever your situation may be, but those gives that gives you an idea of what the where the prices are uh, on the racetrack and how that is uh, kind of uh, calculated. Let's see, we have a question. How do you know when our machines need to be recalibrated? <clears throat> Good question. Uh, typically, that comes with a number of hours uh, that are on the machine. I don't know which machine uh, you have. Uh, Tammy, maybe you could t uh, tell me that, put that in the chat box, which particular machine you have. Now, but the, the basic reason, basic way to tell, for example, if you have an analog machine, that would be the Max, uh, the Pulse Pro, the Soul machine, uh, an analog type of device, meaning there are uh, actual electrodes that the spark comes, comes across to create the signal that is put out through the coil. Um, uh, so, if in fact you take your machine and turn it all the way down to where you would basically turn it off to where you wouldn't hear a signal if you still hear a signal you can't turn it down all the way but you hear a very fast clicking or you hear a clicking at that point that's telling us that the electrodes may need to be adjusted if it's a, if it's okay and it's working all right for you uh, and you still have that 
that's fine. I mean, I have one one person that's had a machine now for, in fact, it just went back to the factory, I think, the first time, and the machine was like 11 years old, and uh, it's probably needed to be recalibrated for years because she could never really turn it all the way down, but she was content with that. She knew how to apply that to the horses, so she didn't want to uh, rock the boat, if you will. So if you're comfortable with, with what's going on, you're fine. The other thing that can happen on some of the devices is those electrodes can be become a little misaligned, uh, whether that's just from usage or from maybe some jolt to the device that, do, that they, they, all the analog machines can be a bit erratic, meaning they'll go click, 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 click 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 that type of situation uh, with the with the signal delivery most analog machines will do that it and it also has a basis of how you're using it if you're always using it on a low to moderate type of setting then it'll run a lot longer before it needs recalibration if you take your machine and you're treating feet and ankles whether that's on a person animal or a large animal and you turn the device up higher you're going to put more energy uh, into the um, the, the uh, electrodes causing them to wear differently and to maybe de be re recalibrated. So if that erratic sound is is to the point that it, it's difficult to control at all, it's time to have your your uh, machine recalibrated. With the some of the Pulse Pro machines, the, the the many machines on the market are very difficult to recalibrate without doing something. The Pulse Pro is made with a very adjustable uh, calibration setting on the uh, in the spark chamber and candidly sometimes it, that thing can come a little loose and cause it to need to be recalibrated so we be doing some re-engineering to clean that particular situation up but that that's as it is what, what I recommend if you have a machine and you're curious uh, do a recording of it uh, whether it's a video recording or a sound recording send that to us or you can send it to me I'll listen to it and give you an analyzation as to whether or not you feel that uh, I feel that it needs to be recalibrated at this point give me a minute or two uh, recording or give us that minute or two recording so we can listen to it maybe you can turn it up and down during that uh, period of time so we can hear how it reacts but that's the best way to tell make a recording send it to us and we will certainly uh, take a look at it uh, at that point all right let's see um, Okay, Lisa. Okay, great. Uh, it's watching and uh, no questions at this point. If you have a question, uh, please uh, put it in the chat box and I'd be more than happy to answer it or text your name to 502-599-9722. If you have a question about MagnaCon, question about what's going to be going on at MagnaCon, uh, that's fine. Question about machines, um, the, the whole thing. A uh, client uh, using a large loop in a director's type of chair with metal frame and sparks jumped uh, or arced off of the machine. What happens is there's energy coming off of these coils and as you turn the coils up, if you're in a chair like that to where there are loose fittings, we have the same thing if we talk about chains. If someone, if a woman or a man is wearing a loosely made chain around their neck, you can get an arcing in that chain. It's because there is a gap in the in the pieces between the washer and the frame that are typically metal and then there and there's a little air space in there you can do we used to demonstrate the machines and people still do taking a chain turning the coil up and using a regular looped chain like you'd, you'd have and that's put together to where it's a circle of a chain and that chain will arc and that shows the energy that's coming off of the device so that it's nothing wrong with that you just need to know that if you got a chair or something with loose uh, fittings as part of it you can get an arcing as you turn the device up so you just need to either change the chair to where it's all wood or very solid in its construction perhaps got something in my eye perhaps uh, plastic or something like that that you won't have that particular issue with the arcing but yes it can cause arcing some of the old old machines years ago that they you when you turn them on they were on high all the time and the only reason only way you control them was 
to move the coil back and forth to the person or to the animal that you were working on and they were always on high they, they would spark things in the room because of the highness of the signal. Our devices are totally controllable so if you're in one of those types of chairs that has loose fittings you can just turn it down a little bit and the arcing will stop. Now if your person wants it higher then you may have to change uh, locations or what's going on. The digital machines don't do that quite as much, um, have that problem as much as the analog machines. Again that's the Max, the Pulse Pro, the Soul devices, uh, the Maya and the Semi and the Semi 5 and the Vesta Dual do not have the arcing uh, problem nearly as much because it's a little different in how the power is delivered to the coils and how it's distributed. Uh, great question though and I hope that was uh, sufficient on uh, answering uh, that question. Uh, Terry, thank you. Tammy, thanks for being with us. Uh, can you again tell us how we'll be able to see Magnacon information? Also, when you send your machine in for calibration, how many days does it take to receive it back? Great question, Suzanne. Uh, after Magnacon is completed, uh, our great crew here and, and uh, uh, here in the room uh, with me will be able to uh, edit everything down, make sure it's ready to go, and then we'll put it out as a package. So you can watch each one of the speakers, each session of information that's distributed will be available for you. Uh, Tony will make sure it's all ready to go and have it um, uh, put into a package so you'll be able to see it uh, for your uh, learning purposes. Okay, when you send the machine back, typically it's in the factory for uh, 24 to 48 hours and then it's returned turn uh, back to you. If you're in a situation, quite often we have loaner machines available, so if you're in a situation and you, want, and you don't want to be without your machine, you can call the office and talk to Lee and arrange for a loaner or short-term rental, if you will, so you can be covered uh, so you have what you need for the machine. But typically, if it's a day or two to get here, or a day or two in the factory, and a day or two back to you, then you're looking at uh, four or five days if you were to ship it on a Friday and get it back by the next Friday is typically uh, how that goes. You can decide how fast you want to uh, ship the machine. Suzanne, great question. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, let's have a look here and see if there's anything else. Again, uh, text your name. Let me make sure that no one has... Oh, I do have a text. No, that's an old one. Uh, let's see. Come up here. No other messages this morning for me to uh, give anybody a call. Love to talk to somebody if you uh, would like to visit. Uh, give me a call and uh, or give me a text. I'll give you a call and we'll set you up with some uh, MagnaWave gear so you're uh, ready to go for summertime hat, t-shirt, whatever it is you may be uh, looking for to enjoy and uh, uh, spread the MagnaWave love, if you will. Let's see here what uh, any other questions that may be up. Got questions over here. Um, people who work with show cattle I have a client with a steer with stiffness in its shoulders. It's not not off, just stiff. Area areas to pay attention to. Well, when you're talking about that, and it's whether it's a show cow or a steer or a horse or a small animal or a person if they have that stiffness you certainly want to treat the area of stiffness so you would treat both shoulders uh, of the animal and and then certainly as they kind of went on to say do a full body treatment because you want to be able to uh, get that good blood oxygenation and good blood flow uh, through the whole body and uh, so to treat the area of indication plus a broader area. If you don't have time, I would treat the area of indication and as broadly out as you can from that area um, to help help the overall situation uh, of the animal. Certainly, when you're doing that, in, when doing the shoulders, you could move around to the chest area and come up and do the heart and lungs, or on, in the case of a horse or whatever, you want to go up down the top line uh, somewhat to treat the lungs, to get the lungs uh, opened up properly and get good oxygenation into the lungs, into the blood in the lungs so that can move out uh, to the body if you don't have time to do the whole full body type of application. <clears throat> Good question but again it's and, and it's the same thing on a person. If you're treating my knee you want to you want to treat the knee and then you want to treat the, the torso if you will so you get good blood oxygenation to move throughout the body for the uh, uh, well-being uh, of the animal. Um, when treating arthritis in dogs what 
guidelines are best to follow. Well, let me before I go into that, uh, what I'd recommend to folks if you uh, if if you're a practitioner and you want to understand this. Uh, the app, the MagnaWave app, is available that you can secure the app. And in the app is a total breakdown of guidelines, and we're adding guidelines to the app uh, almost daily. Aaron's really on and, and putting additional information into the app, dealing with small animals, humans, and large animals, uh, as far as a lot of guidelines that are available. We don't diagnose, but we do have some guidelines that kind of work and have shown some good results for various issues that, that people smoke small animals or large animals may uh, experience. But when treating arthritis, it's a little bit the same thing. And we're going to go into this at MagnaCon, and I can kind of deal with it here in terms of saying, what it, what are we trying to achieve? And, and what's a good guideline for arthritis? Well, certainly you're going to treat the area of pain. If you have it in your hand and you want to treat the inflammation around the joints in the hand, it, it, you, where you can get some good oxygenation by treating the low back, you're not going to get that to the hand immediately. And you want to really work the area of the hand. So treat the hand. You can use the paddle, put the hands on both sides of the paddle. You can put the hands inside the, the large loop or you can put the hands between the, the butterfly of the small butterfly. Just put your hand or hands in there and let it treat from that type of situation. But then to come back and maybe treat the shoulders to get good oxygenation in the lungs so that is nourished, if you will, throughout the day with the good oxygen going to the area. So you clean up where the accident occurs and then you clean up everything around it so people can get back on the, uh, on the road tree fell in my on my the street just up from our house yesterday and when I came home uh, the part of the lanes were blocked and everybody was having to go around it well they cleaned that tree off right to the edge of the road I, I mean if you if you were on the just beyond the white line going down the road this morning you could have hit the tree so they cleaned it up as much as they could but it still is an obstacle that you have to get through and they're going to come back now today I'm sure the city's going to come back and clean up the rest of that tree and we have the same situation with the body you work on the area that where the breakage is and try to work in it and then you clean up everything around it as best you can and if you got time you do a full body treatment just as they're going to do they're going to do a full road treatment on our tree and and clear it up so that's the basic guideline that you want to go after and if you just take that a step further most anything you're dealing with the first question you ask yourself is good oxygenation in the body going to aid what we're trying to take care of when I say aid help uh, rid the body of that of that issue or help it heal from that particular issue and if so if good oxygenation will do that then you just need to think that through for a second and think okay then I can approach this uh, from the standpoint of oxygenation and it's always good to begin in the area and then move to support the area around it and that guideline will pretty much apply to anything you're doing people are looking for okay I have this particular thing in my elbow or I have this it's a medial uh, ligament in my knee or it's the it's the patella tendon in my knee or it's over here on the on the ACL or wherever, wherever it may be and but it, when you get right down to it they're all the same and they all need to be approached in the same basic manner it's not different for an ACL than it is from an MCL uh, or you know lateral medial ligament you just need to approach and treat the area the key comes into how often you do it and quite in and, and frankly, the more you can do it, the better off you are. In, in many indications, somebody will say, well, I want you to come work on me or work on my dog or work on my horse. Can you come once? Of course. Is that going to solve the problem? Maybe, but probably not. It just takes a little more time uh, to do it and sneak up on these things to get ahead of the injuries, as we're quite often talking about. Get ahead of the injury, and, and then comfort ensues, healing ensues, and everything's okay. So that that is the that is that type of uh, um, situation that that you're dealing with person uh, commented yesterday just received my first referral from a local vet to treat a horse with a bad scar on its hind leg uh, and they're very happy about that any suggested guidelines I just kind of let's go back to that for just a second scar on the hind leg treat the scar on the hind leg. Treat it as often as possible. What's it going to do? The better circulation to the area, the better uh, massaging effect of the pulsing to the area is going to do two things. Keep as much scar, keep scar tissue from developing. It's going to heal, but it's going to keep that hard scar tissue from developing. And then if there's any scar sh tissue that's there, it's going to make it softer. Uh, we're doing more and more work, and we've done it over the years. I worked with this for 
since 2002 basically uh, with scarring on the face or scarring on the body and they're using it for people that have plastic surgery whether it's from injury or for a desire for a cosmetic purpose to have plastic surgery if you treat that area after the surgery you're going to help it heal more rapidly uh, by improving the oxygenation and the blood flow to the area and you're going to help it so the scarring is minimalized and you have less scarring quicker healing which is what people want in those types of situation that can apply to tooth work on the teeth uh, dental work uh, whatever it may be to improve the circulation there you're going to have less inflammation less pain from a dental procedure perhaps a wisdom tooth or whatever it may be is it going to totally eliminate the pain in the situation probably not some people it does dr marty tells a wonderful story about when he had it done had some uh, teeth extracted and was really started using his equipment immediately in fact I even think he took the machine with him to the dentist who was a friend of his and as soon as the procedure was over he began to treat and he had very little pain with that type of thing but it's the same thing treat the area that you're having the issue as much as you can is the key or as much as the client uh, has the availability to be with you or you go to the client or whatever it may be as often as possible is the key how much is too much can you do it three times a day well in theory you can I always maintain that if you're going to do a treatment you want to wait four to six hours before you do a subsequent treatment it's like a vitamin you put this into the body the body receives this energy the body utilizes this energy but if you put more energy in there than the body wants to handle and deal with at this point in time you're just wasting your time because the energy is going in but the body's got what it needs for at this point typically that's six to eight minutes or three to five minutes in a location so you might do three to five minutes if this shoulder is really bad you might do three to five minutes on this shoulder and then do the rest of the body to make everything be okay or the, at least the torso to get that which we've always talked about that good type of blood movement so you want to look at that but if it's if it's really severe you might want to do it twice a day morning and night for five or six days and to get ahead uh, of the issue so each each thing is different we just can't say because number one we don't diagnose anything you always want to refer to your doctor and tell your doctor what you're doing what the indication might be and uh, get that type of direction from them but you want to uh, do it as as often as comfortable for you to get a again get ahead of the situation all right let's see if we have any other uh, questions uh, available here um, relevant pole cap. I have a question. Is it okay to use a, a revivant pole cap? Re, revivant, oh, Revitavet, Revitavet pole cap. That's a light device um, while treating the body with MagnaWave. Thanks. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, if you want to put a, a light therapy device, the, the cap as it, as it is, I believe, uh, on the head of the pole of the horse while you're treating the rest of the body, very complimentary. Uh, why not? Light is very beneficial to the healing process and to help the process of the body. And now, you can treat the pole without that. You can treat the pole with the MagnaWave. But if you want to use light and you like to use the light and you like to put that on while you're doing the rest of the body, to speed your process along conceivably do it and, and uh, is it okay to do yes uh, I have a particular device that we're working with uh, doing some experimenting with that is a light device it's a very fast operating light device that works actually we're using it uh, I'll go into the whole thing but in and uh, this device has a little fan in it and so to cool the light as you're using this and it's about this big like this and about a little bit larger than my uh, cell phone here and you put that on the body the way it's being used uh, anyway let me finish this it's got a little motor in it to cool the to cool the light if you treat with that light at the same time I'm using my coil the coil will stop the fan so what you need to do with that little particular device is to and we're changing they're changing that so they can maybe could make the control of the fan away from the piece so the they could be used in conjunction with the PEMF at the same time to to make it work. So you just want to check that when you're using these various uh, pieces of equipment. The uh, Revitavet um, 
application does not have a fan it's got a pad with the lights in it that you would use somewhere so you could treat right over that or around that area as you're using those complementary uh, types of devices it's not uncommon for someone to use a laser on the body on an open wound and then come back and treat it to get good blood flow to the area and to complement the use of both devices uh, complementary therapy is really something now this particular light that we're talking about it's used around the country people will put this light it's a very powerful light you only use it for a minute to two minutes at a location where you're using it but what they found is it will take fat cells and basically make them shrivel up and they, the fluids will come out of them like a grape or a raisin so it, it decreases in size the fluids come out of it and then what they've done in the past is use vibration to move those fluids to the lymphatic system and out of the body to basically get a sculpting, if you will, of the area, the love handles or wherever you want to do this to basically decrease the, the size or decrease the weight of the person and uh, that's the process that they've used. Well, we've been experimenting and using the light and then using MagnaWave to, as, the, as the modality to move the fluids to the lymphatic system to get, the, to get that out of the body to facilitate weight reduction, to facilitate uh, a, a slimming effect, if you will, if that's what you're looking to do to uh, uh, decrease inches in, in the waistline. <laughs> that's basically what, what people use it for. So we're working to understand this and utilize it and uh, we have a, a part of it that's being made that will will have a uh, uh, currently with the fan if you use it on a horse it can get dirty because of the fan and the, where the lights are so they're making a little sealed container for the light and everything so you can use it on a horse uh, in conjunction with the MagnaWave for whatever you're doing if you want those complementary type of therapies so that's some of the things that we're doing from the complementary angle uh, with the device and, and to support and to supplement what people are doing with other devices as well works very been testing it myself works very well uh, with what I was saying shrinking the fat cells having the fluids removed use MagnaWave to pulse the area to put the fluid into the uh, lymphatic system and bingo uh, cut some inches and uh, maybe lose some weight uh, if that's one of the ways that you're looking at doing it any questions send a text to 502 uh, what is it 502-599-9722 and I'd be more than happy to discuss uh, any situation with you uh, or uh, put the question in the chat box let me come over here and see what we've got in the chat box let me come down here uh, there I am um, how costly let's see will we see that light device at MagnaCon um, the short answer is no we're not really ready uh, the manufacturer is not really ready with the equine device yet and so many people are equine uh, boy that's a great question I may be able to uh, have one with me uh, if you'd like to uh, see it and, and go over it they they are I believe they are going to sell for thousand um, uh, dollars uh, maybe less maybe eight hundred dollars is what the uh, retail price will be on these uh, devices uh, they are FDA cleared so there's something that you could use uh, if, if someone wants that in conjunction uh, with your MagnaWave uh, it's just a neat a application for complimentary we've had a lot of people asking about having uh, various therapies available with the MagnaWave and we're looking to to help out in this regard without somebody having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to do something great question uh, that's pretty much the uh, uh, area in terms of cost I don't like to I wanted to just answer that question because it was asked about treating the treating the poll uh, I'm a big believer is is, is when we have some something that's going to be complimentary that we're participating with and there are some other things in the, in the pipeline also that we're talking about working uh, with our devices uh, we want to make sure that they're ready that they're properly vetted and tested and priced and so on and so forth so when people are we're not just you know running down the road throwing something out there uh, so great question it is close uh, to being ready for use with equine uh, the device that we have is certainly available to be used uh, with people we could uh, and once MagnaCon's out of the way and we kind of get back to normal a little bit in the next couple of weeks we're going to be uh, we have an ancillary we're developing an ancillary site a page on the website to where people who are looking for 
for complimentary things that we have found and, and people have liked that you'll be able to see those uh, types of items and uh, partake should you should you wish so that's where that's at all right let's see any other questions don't see anything up at this point if you do have a question um, uh, what light is it? The the light is. Uh, oh, I don't know if I have that. Let me look that up to to uh, to see what's what's there. But we will we will have it. Uh, uh, and John, I know you're going to look at me and say, "Yeah, you keep telling me we're going to have CE." <laughs> um, and uh, but it it it's coming. Elaine's going to tell me why did you talk about that light when we're still getting it getting it worked up to uh, bring it to the practitioners? Well, because the question was asked on the on the. Uh, um, certification page about using light therapy at the same time as the MagnaWay. Okay, any other questions? Just put them in the chat box. We're doing doing pretty good. So uh, uh, 9:45, and we're moving uh, right along. 502-599-9722. Let's see if anybody has uh, put any. Uh, nope, no messages. Um, uh, available. There's uh, Dr. Brandon just came into the room. He's in town for MagnaCon, getting all of his equipment ready to go for the uh, Wave Oasis beds, the vibration PMF therapy together. Uh, certainly, we'll have those at the uh, at the show, and he's making advancements on the beds as well, and we're excited certainly about that. So let's see here. Any other questions? Um, Every time I put the loop around her neck yesterday between horses, she would laugh, cry, and drool at the same time. She enjoyed it for the first time. It's a young lady they were treating her, <laughs> her neck and enjoying the uh, treatments for the first time uh, with, with Magnaway. That's always fun to do somebody for the first time so they can uh, see what's, what's going on. Uh, okay, is there a max time the semi can be used uh, is a question. Um, Elaine, yep, John says Elaine will tell me off. <laughs> Elaine doesn't, doesn't when, when she's after me, she's after me. There's no question. Uh, is there max time the semi can be used? Okay, John, you are using the semi uh, in a 220 atmosphere, which is a higher power than we have in the United States. My recommendation is if you're using the machine and you've run it for uh, th let's say three consecutive 10-minute uh, sessions, 30 minutes. L turn, let the machine just cool for three or four minutes. Uh, there's not a maximum time to say that you, you could use it all day long. Uh, if it gets too hot, if our devices get too warm because of the ambient temperature outside and the temperature that's being generated in the device, they'll stop until they cool. And so as, as long as you're okay with, as long as that's you know, functioning okay and it's not stopping. It may feel warm. You put your hand because the on the semi device, the 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 heating element or the cooling element is in the in in the face plate. In the there's a special um, diffuser in the device to help dis disseminate the heat. It gets quite hot. These devices on the resistors and everything can get up to 150, 160 degrees inside the devices. So uh, you, it, if it feels warm, that's okay. If it feels really hot to the touch just let it cool for a few minutes but uh, normally you would have that potentiality because of your your heat uh, your power difference in the in the uh, in the UK as opposed to the US that also gives you a little stronger signal than it does in the US because we're dealing with 110 you're dealing with 220 and, and there, there is a little difference there. So the, the semi in your environment is a little stronger than the semi in the U.S. environment with the uh, 110 uh, power. All right, so in, in essence, no particular limit uh, on the time that the semi can be used. Just use common sense and, and in between 30-minute treatment sessions, if you will, just let it rest for four or five minutes and it'll, it'll cool off um, and, and take care of itself. Leave it on because there are some small circulation aspects inside the device that help it cool more rapidly than if you were to turn it off and it then it has to just cool to the with an an ambient uh, type of process. All right, let's see if there's any other questions coming up. Let me come back down. Um, no, nothing else there. Uh, question 502-599-9722. Um, 
what does your setup look like? I'm having a Pulse Pro and having, finding someone to make hauling it around, setting it up more convenient. We have some carts uh, for the Pulse Pro that are, are very convenient. The uh, mag carts that you can put the device on. Uh, and and there, here's a question. Somebody, you know, the, the, the Pulse Pro at this point has two lids, a back lid and a front lid. And, uh, and so you put those lids on. You don't, if I were out working and I've done this with the Pulse Pro and the weather is nice, I don't put those lids on. I'll carry the Pulse Pro by itself, or I'll put it on a mag cart and roll it around, but I won't put the lids back on if I'm going to put it into a car. I'll just kind of put the whole cart and, and machine in the back of the car or in the van, whatever it may be, uh, without taking it off of the cart or anything. Or if I'm walking, which I, it's light enough, you can just pick that machine up and go. But when you're done at a particular location, you don't need to put the lids back on necessarily to put it into your car and go on down the road. And, uh, and so that's that's, that's what I would do and how I have approached it uh, over the years as how to uh, move that particular device or any device uh, that you're uh, dealing with. All right, um, let's see. Uh, people talk about what time their airlines are coming in for MagnaCon. They're starting to arrive. Uh, some people will be in today. Uh, of course, tomorrow we start registration, so uh, the people will be coming in in the morning. Um, I have. I have the calming protocol for horses, but not seeing anything for dogs. Would the horse protocol help them help calm a high-stress dog and allow him to focus for training? Correct. The, the calming protocol uh, for a, a, a horse to start at the pole and kind of move down the whole top line is the same thing for a. Um, for a dog would be the same thing for a person. You'd put the coil on the back of the head, you'd work the neck area, move down the spine. Very calming, great, great protocol uh, for doing that. If you're dealing with a horse, and I suppose the same thing would apply, you could put the on a person. You, if you want to calm someone, it's very relaxing to have this on. You can put a coil on their knees and treat their knees and just the pulsing action, the improved blood flow and the oxygenation can serve to be a calming uh, type of type of thing. And the uh, it's, it's called Oshiro's principle and how we how we work the top line. Everything's in the spine, so that's basically what we're doing is moving down the spine to calm everything. Good blood flow, good blood oxygenation to the area and it's calming. So the quick answer is you have it for the the uh, the horse, well it's the same thing for a dog or a cat uh, or a person. Difference, many dogs, you can put the whole dog in the coil, like my little four pound dog, you can put her right in the coil and she, she loves it. She, Debbie puts the coil on or I put the coil on, she'll come if she's not, and it's when, it's interesting how you can do this. I sleep with a coil every night uh, that I treat my feet with, with, you know, here I am aging a little bit and I have some age related neuropathy and so I sleep with a, with a pad, the uh, B2 pad every night and it's interesting when uh, uh, Tootsie, who is now two and a half years old, she'll migrate to the coil some nights, some nights she won't. And so she feels good. But if she doesn't feel good, she'll over there. Next thing I know, she's laying right there next to her right on the coil. Cats will do that a lot. So uh, at any rate, uh, it, it's the same. The body, a blood cell is a blood cell, regardless if you're a person, small animal, or a horse. Oxygenation is as critical to all life as it is to a horse or me or, or you or anybody else. So that's the thing to keep in mind when you think these things through. Just expand what you're looking at and think, hmm, if this is how we do it here, how would I do that on a small animal? That's the question, and, and basically to cover the area is what you want to do, uh, whether it's one, for example, on a dog, you can take the large loop, kind of make it like a hot dog, lay it right there on the, move it at the back of the head, move kind of, if the, horse, the dog can be laying down and kind of move it right down its spine or lay it on the spine and treat the uh, treat the dog that way. Now, it is calming. Uh, we have found and they have found that one of the reasons that PEMF is beneficial for depression is it, pro it produces a sense of well-being. How does it do that? You know, blood. I should ask someone to call and tell me, but it's the blood oxygenation <laughs> and the blood flow. Raise your hand if you agree. <laughs> And but that's how that's how you would approach it. And on a cat, the cat will get all the way in the coil, and you're you're basically doing that. But they found that that the sense of well-being that this device produces is beneficial to depression. It helps someone who's in a depressive state or someone who's in a uh, well 
if you're upset today and you're a little depressed, then you could do this and you, you might feel better. Someone who is clinically what they have, what they call clinical non-responsive depression, meaning that they don't respond to verbal uh, uh, therapy and they don't respond to electric or they don't respond to drugs very well. We have found that if you just treat them regularly, and not you know, it just works. It just helps the sense of well-being. So if someone has a sense of well-being today, that helps the issue if they're having a depressed uh, thoughts or depressed state of mind. It can it can aid in that. And there are devices specifically made for depression, FDA cleared, so on and so forth, for depression that are pulsed magnetic type of devices to help with those situations. Any questions? Uh, give me a call. I'd be happy to. I don't know why my computer just said hello goodbye um, I don't think the battery was low but it may, oh the battery is low so I can't see the questions there let me close that up should have charged it up more effectively uh, let's see um, Codell hoof pain the term I have not heard before the horse is having an MRI on Tuesday and the owner is considering PEMF will it help if they're having foot pain I don't know what the Codell is. I'm not. It's the first time I've heard of it. I need to look it up, but I don't want to leave my screen here to do that. I could have done it over here, but my battery is not in good shape. Um, but hoof pain. Don't forget the first word. Hoof pain being the key. Pain is a result of inflammation. If if we can help the inflammation in the foot, we can help relieve the pain, and then the MRI is going to show them what's really causing what's going on and what needs to happen with that with the doctor's direction. But will it help with the pain? Forget the first word, hoof pain is the question. Go after the pain and let then let the doctor tell you what, what's going on to help facilitate it from that perspective if it is and, and again it never hurts hey doc what is this and I want to treat it for the pain and give them some uh, relief until you do what you're going to do is that okay the doctor will say yes or no or the doctor will understand uh, what you're dealing with so always approach it from from that per particular situation and that is really also something else that we talk about when we go deeper into things we don't diagnose we don't treat specific conditions or indications but someone will always come up and say well I've got this Odell hoof pain and I want to know how to treat it. Well what we know how to treat is inflammation, inflammation causes pain and let's deal with that and go and go after it. So don't get stumped with what the big terminology is or the description of what's going on. Look at what's the root thing that's occurring and and deal with that uh, when you're approaching those types of situations. Uh, Brandon, oh, Brandon's got some, effort. is that the, is that the app? You got your app up. Okay, good. We're going to, got the BrainTap app, the MagnaWave BrainTap app coming up. That's good. Thank you, Brandon. And we'll be talking more about at MagnaCon, and you'll start seeing more of that uh, on the MagnaWave PMF website for the BrainTap and how you can use the app to for the Oasis beds and for the BrainTap situation. We also have, coming back to that a little bit, I'm covering a lot of stuff here, and I don't want to bounce around too much, but we have the frequency music that we use in the wave oasis beds that's designed at specific frequencies for relaxation, for anxiety, for uh, joy, for motivation, basically a systematic type of blood flow motivation effect on the body. Frequencies will do that, those types of things. And so we have this frequency designed music. Uh, in the app. So in theory, you can treat your dog and play the music at the same time for relaxation and have that in the I mean the dogs hear and they hear the music and what's going on. And the same thing for your clients. You can treat your client with or without the Wave Oasis but have this frequency music playing in the background which is also aiding in everything you're doing. There are devices out there on the market that that talk about PMF and frequency uh, based music through the device. We now have that, that you can play that music right on your phone. If you want to attach a little speaker and have that playing in the background, to, and you can, there's a selection of several different uh, music selections that you can play for various uh, situations right there on the app. So there's another reason to uh, take a look at the, at the, at the MagnaWave um, 
at the MagnaWave app. Okay, we're getting close here on time. Any other questions? Let's see if there has been a text. Be more than happy to, uh, nope, no text messages. 502-599-9722. Just love to talk to people. And it's always interesting because they go deeper into the uh, questions. Uh, but that's, so that's what's happening with the uh, MagnaWave uh, BrainTap uh, app. It's the, it's the uh, Magneti, MagnaWave um, uh, light and sound uh, app, meaning light uh, into the eyes and sound on the uh, app that plays with the Wave Oasis beds, or that you can just play when you're treating a client uh, to produce the mood uh, that you're looking for. It's like essential oils, if you will. And so if you're into essential oils, you could use the oil like Dr. Uh, Nye does. He uses his oils. He comes back and treats with the MagnaWave, and now you can have the frequency-based music to support uh, what you're what you're uh, doing and so just a lot of combinations a lot of complementary uh, type of uh, availabilities uh, for you to use any other questions I'd be more than happy to answer them at this time just put them in the chat box uh, I'm in the certified oh I need to leave this and go to the regular how do I do that the regular page to see um, pages go to my page now we'll see if there's a question because uh, this battery went dead we're getting close on time but let me uh, bring it up here and we'll see what we've got it's taking time for it to come out come on oh here we are let's see question let me, oh, of this I can't have that got to get rid of that because we'll have the feedback okay if you have any questions I don't know why I can't get it um, I can turn it down. 20 people with Tim Gleason, mainstreaming, restream, 36, 30 comments. Let's see if I can bring the comments up here. Can't get the comments to come up easily. Well, it's different on, oh, here, it's different on the old iPad than it is on the computer, so I can't see the questions. So, with that, we're basically out of time. Come see us at MagnaCon. If you can't make MagnaCon, we're going to have all the videos available for you to use for your learning purposes. And if you need CE credits for your uh, recertification, if it's time for that to take place, the uh, MagnaCon education series will certainly be available to you. It's going to be busy next few days. Uh, looking forward to it and uh, looking forward to meeting all of you who will be there with us at MagnaCon. Magnacon, and uh, uh, really look forward to that time. So, uh, wave on to a good day and uh, good therapy and good health to everyone. Take care of your clients, and and if you have questions, please feel free to give us a shout here at MagnaWavePMF.com, and we look forward to uh, visiting with you next week, Tuesday morning on the Office Hours program. Have a great week. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Goodbye.